Hello! In this video, we will take a look at how to address data collection and documentation for the SNSF Data Management Plan or DMP. My name is Ursula Losli. I work in research data management support at the Open Science Team at the University of Bern. In the first section of the DMP, the SNSF asks three questions about your data collection and documentation. First, you have to describe the data you will collect, observe, generate or reuse. Second, you have to describe how you will do this. And third, you have to describe your documentation and metadata. We will go through these questions now step by step. In this first question 1.1, you have to describe the data you will collect, observe or generate. You also have to mention any existing data that will be reused. This can be your own data or third-party data. When you describe your datasets, mention the type, file format, content and estimated volume for each dataset. The details about the estimated volume of your data may be provisional estimates and can be changed later. Try to give a good overview of all your datasets so that it is easy to understand about which of your datasets you are talking later in the DMP. For example, naming or even numbering your datasets during the description and later referring to the number or name of your dataset can help. The choice of a file format is crucial in collaboration and when sharing and preserving data. Some file formats are only readable with the same software that they have been created with. This software may be subject to licensing or patent protection, so other people who do not have licensed this specific software cannot use your data. To avoid this problem, you can use open, non-proprietary file formats whenever possible. Adobe PDF is an example of an open file format that may be viewed in a number of applications and not just Adobe products. In question 1.2, you have to explain how your data will be collected, observed or generated. This should contain a description of your plan for controlling and documenting the consistency and quality of the collected data. Mention here, for example, your calibration processes, repeated measurements, your data recording standards, the usage of controlled vocabularies, data entry validation and so on. You should also describe how you will handle your data management during the project. For this, mention for example naming conventions, version control and folder structures. Good file and folder naming and structuring helps to find and understand your data files. This is important when collaborating with others, when publishing or archiving your data, but sometimes also for yourself to understand your own data after some months or years. For both the naming and structuring of your files and folders, you should define a system and document it, for example, in a readme file. About readme files I will talk in some minutes. And you should use your system consistently. In question 1.3, you have to describe all types of documentation you will provide with your data. This can be readme files, codebooks and metadata. Documentation contains all information that is needed to understand and reuse your data. Think of yourself in six months. How will you know what your data is about or how they were generated? And think about other researchers. How will they learn about your data and how it was created? How will they be able to cite you and give you credit? All these questions can be answered with metadata and documentation. Documentation can contain contextual and explanatory information, such as why, how and by whom data were created, prepared, digitized and so on. What the data mean in the context of your project, content and structure of the data, alterations that have taken place and any other explanations needed to make sense of the data. Readme files and codebooks are additional files to your datasets. A readme file informs about what the dataset contains, how the data was collected, what files the dataset and documentation contains, who contributed to the dataset, 
details about license information and citation suggestions. Templates to adapt on your specific data can be accessed via these two links. When you work with tabular or statistical data, a codebook should be part of your documentation. It explains every single variable, value, code, label, and even how missing data are handled in a separate file. Just imagine a really big Excel or tabular file with a lot of abbreviations in the column titles and endless numbers. Other people will possibly not be able to understand and use this data without the detailed information as mentioned before. Let's have a deeper look at metadata. In comparison to readme files and codebooks, metadata are highly structured and standardized information stored in a machine-readable language. General common metadata standards are Dublin Core or Datasite. But there are also a lot of community-specific metadata standards. You can find details about different metadata standards on fairsharing.org. For example, the Institutional Repository of the University of Bern, Boris Portal, uses Dublin Core as metadata standard. This is an example of metadata created with Boris Portal. A big advantage of metadata is that they are processable by human and machines. Describing data with standardized metadata allows interoperability of data between different repositories or databases. This enables a better findability and thus increases the visibility and reusability of scientific results. Maybe you wonder how you can create metadata. When publishing data in a repository, typically you fill out fields in an input form with information about your dataset. The information you type in these fields will be stored as standardized metadata in the background. Or you can generate metadata as a separate file with a metadata generator. In the SNSF DMP form, you can mention the metadata standards that are used by the repository you will use for publishing your data. Information about the metadata standards a repository uses can be found, for example, in the About or the Documentation section of the website of a repository. Or you find the information on re3data.org, a registry of data repositories. Thank you for your attention. The next video will walk you through part 2 of the DMP, Ethics, Legal and Security Issues.